What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So obviously I'm just joking about those DeWalt stands being dead to me. I have four of them, I'm not getting rid of them. We'll still use them in the other truck because we operate two trucks. And I'm gonna use them as saw horses. They're really good saw horses to hold up material and whatnot. So I don't hate those stands. Please don't get offended, I like those stands. But they do have their weaknesses. Anyone who's used them knows that. So that brings us to what's in these boxes right here. This is the cut hub. A lot of you are familiar with it, but probably I would say like at least 50% of you have no idea what this is. It's a professional grade miter saw stand, essentially, that's what it is. Now, what's in these boxes could be argued is very expensive. I would even say that. It was $3,400 to have these boxes purchased and shipped to me. That being said, I paid all of that cost myself. I have no affiliation with CutHub. I have, I'm not sponsored. They did not send me this. They didn't give me a discount. They didn't pay for the shipping. This was all purchased by me. So if you think I'm crazy, um, you're, you're like my wife. We'll open up these things and see what's inside of them. Well, I know what's inside of them, but I'll show you guys. And I'll talk about why I chose this and I'm not gonna obviously know in this video how good it is and all that, that's gonna be time spent in the field. But I'll give you my first impression and tell you why I chose this. So we'll go ahead and start popping these boxes open and we're gonna get this set up. All right, let's see what we got here. So we have a two by 12 and our first piece of the stand, the first sawhorse, if you will. So we'll set this up here and take it apart. Now you may be wondering like, why would they send you a, a two by 12? You'll see here in a little bit, that's actually part of the workstation. All right, get these over here for now. So it has this little button right here where it just clips in. Pretty easy setup. And basically the same concept of other saw stands. You just open these legs up and there you go. So now we'll set this thing up. We'll just set it right there. And one thing that really drew me to the stand, you see this uneven part of my garage floor right here? It has these um, adjustments for the legs. So I can kind of just get it level or at least where all at least three legs are touching and then loosen the leg that is not touching and now there's no more rocking motion to it so that's pretty cool and you saw how quick that was that was like two seconds to do that now right off the bat just first impression of how this thing looks i mean you got to admit it looks pretty sharp and that may not be important to a lot of people but that is something that is important to me when i look at a tool i want to know does it look cool like, is, is it look sharp? You know, that may seem shallow to some people, but hey, I'm, I'm a shallow guy, so no, I'm just kidding. But I don't know, I just think of that stuff. So how it looks, it looks nice. It looks really sharp. It feels solid and it feels sturdy. It doesn't feel like it's just gonna blow over in the wind. And one thing I'll bring up right now is that people would say, I could have built that you know, for 500 bucks, or I could have made something like that easy. You know, I could have got like some piece of aluminum like this and just, that's fine. I wouldn't do it though. So that's where I see the value in it. If you can do that and save all that money, I mean, there's really nothing stopping you from doing that. But what was stopping me from doing it is that I, number one, didn't want to do it. Number two, I know that if I built something like this, it wouldn't be this quality and this good looking. Number three, I don't have the time to simply just to do that. It's, or, or the skill or the tools to, to make this thing look this nice. So if you have ways of doing it, by all means, I learned a long time ago in kindergarten, we don't all have to like and do the same things. So that's, that's my opinion on that. And I know some of you are probably thinking right now, well, yeah, maybe you couldn't have made this thing out of metal, but you have the skills and tools to make it out of wood. And that's true, I could have thrown something together, but it just wouldn't be the same for me. And our jobs, we're, we're very different than most finished carpenters in the sense that we just go 
from house to house, usually two or three houses a week. So we cut everything outside. If you watch the videos, we're outside in the driveway on the sidewalk. Something like wood for us just wouldn't last in the elements. It wouldn't last by the Texas sun just beating on it. It's warping it. If it gets a little moisture from the humidity, which we have a lot of down here, it would change the tolerances in that wood and I would just get frustrated with it and it would just bother me so much. I just know that I wouldn't be able to do the wooden miter saw stand, wing, support, whatever. Now I know some guys who do that, who make miter saw wings, and it looks like it works out great for them. So again, this is the route that I chose to go down and I will let you guys know how it goes. But just on the specs of this, I know some people are gonna wanna know the specs. The table itself is 70 inches long, and then we're gonna go 10 inches wide. So you got a 10 inch support right here and 70 inches long. So that's gonna fit in the back of your pickup truck. I don't know, I don't, I don't know. I never had a short bed, but definitely my long bed it'll fit. So I, I get real trucks that aren't short beds. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Please, please don't be offended, guys. I feel like I can't even joke anymore. <laughs> and then the height is gonna be 33 inches. And I, I wonder too, if you can just use these to raise it. So I bet you could, you could just probably, yeah, you could, you could probably just use those to gain more inches. So I'll try that out real quick. Yeah, so now we're at 36 and a half. I mean, that, that's pretty slick right there. And you can level it. I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. And then if you look inside, like right here, I still got a lot more I could go with raising that. Let's, let's go ahead and measure that one as well. So that's gonna be, that piece of plastic is about 10 inches. You could probably raise it about eight before this thing slips out of the, the square tubing here, or whatever it is. That actually is amazing. And there's a good comparison of how much higher I brought it just using those uh, adjustable legs. All right, what do we got here? So this right here, this is how we mount, I believe this is how we mount the miter saw. I don't know, I'll figure it out. And then there's also a table saw support as well. And what, oh, this thing. I don't, I forgot about this thing. I don't know how I forgot. This was one of the big things that sold me on this saw. So this is a stop block. So let me, let me show you. I'm gonna bring this back over here. So you can see on here, there is a, um, it's like a machined tape measure in here and it's, it's very high quality and you can actually feel all the little grooves. So if you scrape across this with something, it's not like it's gonna take it off. It's not like a ink or something. So the way this works, this thing is, it's so smooth. It's like unreal how smooth this is. And then you just dial it in right where you want it. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's a stop block, but it's probably the greatest stop block. And then you just lock it down. And it ain't going nowhere. But that is just butter. Absolutely butter, how smooth that is. So this right here is how the miter saw, uh, or this is the miter saw mounting plate. So your miter saw mounts to this and then this plate mounts to the tubes. So the tubes are back here, these right here. So you can see there's a little button here. So you'll just push that, slide it in, and then you see that it locks in there. Now it will slide both of these in, and then, let's see, same thing on this side. And then you can adjust it too to get it closer. And I guess even all the way down there. Yeah. So it's pretty versatile. Yeah, and that's, that feels smooth. 
That attaches there, and then this attaches onto there. And that's the part that I need to set up and calibrate for my saw. So, miter saw time. Now, just, just wait. All right, we got our new miter saw. So, we're gonna mount this one on here. I wanted to use this one because it's red and you know it goes with the theme of the red you know with the cut hub so no actually I've been wanting to try this miter saw for a long time and what better way to start trying it out than with a brand new setup like this so we're going to pop this open take it all get all everything sorted out and get it mounted to the cut hub mounting plate here Dang, that looks nice. All right, I'll do a full review on this thing as well. But right now we're focusing on the cut hub. But that is a, I gotta say, that is a beautiful saw right there. And it's super smooth as well. So now at this point, we've got our mounting plate for our miter saw adjusted for the Milwaukee. And basically what that is, these screws right here, you have to raise and lower them according to what miter saw you have. So you loosen these screws and then it slides down these uh, poles here, and then you just tighten them back up till you have it exactly where you want it. So we made it flush, and now you can see we have our two stands set up right here. And the way this works is, and also you might notice, these things are pretty cool. We have them high. Again, John and I are like 6'1", so we have these at 40 and a half inches. And just for comparison, the DeWalt is 34 inches. So that's pretty cool that you have that option to make it like higher and lower based on your personal um, physical height. This tube just slides out like I showed you earlier. So it slides in right there. So now this miter saw mounting plate right here, this will just slide on to those uh, two rails right there, those two pipes, tubes, whatever you want to call them. And then they just get tightened right there two knobs at the front. Now we can set the saw up here and you can see this right here sits flush across this whole work surface and that right there is a dream and if you look on the other side it's going to be the same exact thing flush with the tabletop of the saw and flush with the support of the cut hub. So now that we know that we're flush with that we have another decision to make. <clears throat> we need to decide where we're going to put this miter saw because you're going to drill your own holes into this mounting plate and you can have this thing far back like that, far back against the plate or you can pull it forward. You got to kind of think of you know how much material surface here you want to use. I don't want to put it all the way back because I know on sometimes on some 16 foot base moldings, when I have them up here, they kind of flex, especially MDF, and they'll kind of like, like kind of curve back this way. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mount this miter saw dead center of this mounting plate. So this, this miter saw almost seems like it was made for this cut hub. It's like exactly um, even on both sides and then the space between here and here we can just split that difference how'd you get out here <laughs> inch and a half So that's our first little bracket attached there and we just used a square, made sure it was square and then we just came in one foot. So we got to do one more. So there we have both of our brackets on. I was looking at this, it has a place for me to run my extension cord through. 
All right, so right here on the grass, I have all of the components of the cut hub system that I ordered. And I'm just gonna time how long it takes me to set this up from multiple pieces to the complete setup. The reason I'm doing this is because I've seen other videos on the cut hub and people in the comments are always like, that thing takes way too long to set up. It's way too expensive. It's way too bulky, just complaining and complaining. So I honestly wanna see how long it takes me to set up. This will be my first time setting it up other than the initial time when I was figuring it out in the garage. So as soon as my hand touches this first um, piece of equipment right here, I'll throw a timer on the screen and we'll see how long it takes. I'm not gonna try to race. I'm just gonna do it how I would normally do it. So here we go. And we'll start the time. And this is uneven ground, but we can adjust that later. For some reason, I wanna like push this and then pull this, but I don't have to. I'm just thinking of the DeWalt, so it's a little weird at first. Okay, next step is to get these tubes connected to each other. All right, there's one. Oh, that one actually, I think I want that one right here. So it takes a little bit of moving these from side to side to get it going, but it's not too bad. All right, those two are locked in. So next I'll do the miter saw. <clears throat> All right, so that's that. And then the two supports, which I think I'd probably, this will be cool to put them on both, both on one side. So we're gonna do that. We'll just put one about there. Cause then you'd have like a huge workbench. So once I get this one in, we'll stop the time now. So bam. Easy to set up. I don't know how long that takes. I won't know until I go back and watch this video, but maybe a couple of minutes. So yeah, this is actually pretty cool. This is gonna be 36 and a half inches of solid workspace here. So I could see myself using this as like a big table. But yeah, that's it. It's a beautiful tool, but that doesn't mean anything. The only thing that really means something is how is it going to hold up in the field on our job sites. If it holds up and it doesn't just fall apart like these bolts and screws don't come apart, I see no reason why this wouldn't be an absolute dream come true for me. Right now it is, but it's hard to say that without using it on some jobs and getting a feel for it. But I have no, no problems about how it sets up. I like how it, you can level and adjust the legs. I like how you can raise it up higher just for taller people. And I like how it'll accept any miter saw. You just gotta do the proper adjustments on the shimming, and bringing this thing up and down. I like the material supports. Initially, first, right off the bat, first review, I'm gonna give this five stars. It's amazing, but we'll see how it holds up. So there you have it. The first look and setup at my cut hub right here. I couldn't be happier. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one. Yeah, this thing is awesome.